finding good taste at the most popular restaurant on the Riverwalk in scenic San Antonio. See why tourists and locals clamor for a table here and the margarita this city is known for. Then, road trip. We're heading to a spot not far from world famous Lukenbach, Texas. A place where bratwurst and beer come with a bet. Say what? And steak fans, Houston's hottest steakhouse also has a table with a killer view. Join us at the table. This is one meal you don't want to miss. I'm Tangie Patton. Welcome to Good Taste and welcome to the beautiful San Antonio Riverwalk, the most traveled to tourist destination in all of the state. We chose this scenic spot because we're going to take you to the most popular restaurant on the Riverwalk, Boudreaux's. The San Antonio Riverwalk is alive with color. Its banks lined with bustling restaurants and bars. For the past 30 years, one restaurant consistently stands out with its stellar food and fantastic service, Boudreaux's. We're enjoying it. In a state where everything is bigger and better, this popular spot boasts the tiniest, busiest kitchen in all of Texas. Also, the first spot in Texas to offer tableside guacamole, a genius move. Oh, it's awesome. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we've never had orange in our guacamole before. From their award-winning juicy blackened prime rib to the house-smoked jumbo shrimp that's paired with cheesy gulf crab enchiladas, life is good at Boudreaux's. You look very happy. I am happy. Joining me now is Andreas, the GM here at Boudreaux's on the Riverwalk. This is truly a special place. It really is. I mean, it can't get any better. You're right here by the river and enjoying some great homemade food and uh, with some product from this region. So it's, and the weather is beautiful. So most of the, most every day of the year, the weather is beautiful on the Riverwalk. And that's a true statement. Well, let's talk about some of the great food. I, you got to admit the table side guacamole. That was genius. It is. That's something that uh, we have. Uh, it's just unbelievable. I, I really never thought it'd be so popular dish, but uh, we have s just about everybody come to San Antonio is going to have to come by and taste the guacamole prepared table side. On a given night, because I know you're busy day in and day out, what's an average crowd size? Uh, we probably serve anywhere between uh, 300 to 500 people. That's crazy. Yes. And when you go in the kitchen and you see the, the tiny kitchen that puts yeah. out this yeah. amazing food, it's my Yeah, mind. I'm, uh, I, I don't know. These guys are great back there. Um, you know, they're just a great team. They've been there for a long time. The average person that has been with us as a, you know, as a chef or cook, it's been anywhere from 10 to 20 years. And you don't see that yeah. very and often. A lot of the key people have been here actually 20 years or plus, you know, so. And being that close to each other, you, you, you definitely know, you know each other well. <laughs> you better work yeah. as a team, right? <laughs> every, every little inch of the kitchen is it's just like uh, every move. They know exactly where to go, what not to do, or where to be at the time. It's, it's like a symphony. Everyone has, has a note to play. Right here, runner table 23, please. The executive chef overseeing this busy kitchen today is Robbie Nolan. His impressive resume includes a stint at Thomas Keller's famed French Laundry in California. In fact, that's Keller holding Keller. Robbie named his son after his mentor, chef, and friend. So as, you know, Mr. Big Time Chef, when you eat here, what do you order? The black and prime rib every time, every time. You know, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, and I really enjoy eating that here. That's what I get to. What do you think it is about this place that people from literally all over the world come and come back? You know, I think the service. I think the service speaks volumes about a restaurant, and here at Boudreaux's, we really connect with our guests and make sure they have a great experience. Yeah, and, uh, the, food. and the food. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I would think the black and prime rib is one of the most popular dishes it on is, the It is. It is. You know, the black and prime rib is slow roasted all day. We do it six hours in a low oven, 180 degrees, and then we finish it by putting in a blackening spice, which is 
cayenne pepper and Cajun seasoning. We sear it on the flat top, both sides. Serve with roasted potatoes and vegetables. It's so good. And then another popular one, that South Texas quail. Texas quail, yeah. So a bob white uh, quail, which is a, a breed, um, we stuff it uh, with poblano peppers, a little bit of roasted corn, and apples. We let that marinate in a little bit of vinegar, salt, and pepper. And it's smoked with uh, on the grill with mesquite and pecan, and then we serve it with roasted potatoes and vegetables as well. A little bit of demi-gloss, which is a veal stock reduction, and it's done. It's beautiful. The wait for a table here can be lengthy without a reservation, but there's plenty to take in while you wait for that coveted spot. The most popular drink on the menu for the past 30 years, mm, prickly pear margarita. Cheers. Wine fans, there are some great choices here for you, too. We have an amazing wine list. We do, and uh, that gets changed you know, on a weekly basis sometimes, depending what the availability is. No one leaves Boudreaux's unhappy, especially after one bite of that delicious guacamole. I love this place. Oh, love, it's fantastic. Fantastic. love this food. Welcome to my kitchen, everybody. I'm going to show you how to make that famous Boudreaux's guacamole. It's so easy. You're going to start with avocados, fresh lime, jalapenos or serrano, fresh tomatoes, oranges, cilantro, and onion. We're going to start off with the orange juice. So juice about half an orange. Then you're going to juice your lime, cut your avocados, give them a rough chop in the bowl. You don't want them too creamy, so leave some of the chunks in there. Then you're going to add those beautiful roasted tomatoes, charred jalapenos, your cilantro, a little bit of onion, mix it all together. Okay, add a little sea salt, as much or as little as you like. And again, keep in mind, it's those roasted tomatoes that make this guacamole so spectacular. Okay guys, I'm going in. Mm. So good. There you have it, Boudreaux's world famous table side guacamole. Up next, we're headed to the Texas Hill Country. We found a brewery that offers a cozy alternative when it's time to turn out the lights. Then to Houston's hottest new steakhouse that's in a very old building. You'll want to jump on this ride, because steak fans, it doesn't get any better. Good things come from Cisco. Fredericksburg is known for its charm. Main Street is the main drag. You can find everything here from a cool jar of Hill Country pickles to some really neat stuff for your house. German roots run deep here, so as you'd expect, finding a great Hefeweizen or pale ale is easy to do. How about one better? We found a bed to go with that brew. Let's go. <laughs> Fredericksburg has tons of B&Bs, but only one bed and brew. A cool concept for the fun-seeking traveler, complete with a German beer garden, hearty German grub, and a comfy bed when your day is done. We goof around, we have a lot of fun, so it's just, it's a fun place to be. One of a kind for sure, and a spot that gets high marks for its house brews, and maybe a place in the history books too. The Fredericksburg Bed & Brew is said to be the oldest brewery in Texas. The brewmaster and the manager have been a team here almost since day one. So both of you guys that literally were here from the, from the very beginning, right? Yeah, pretty much. 21 years ago. I was one of the first customers. And, and I sold with his first beer at the pub. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Nope. Were you legal back then? <laughs> <laughs> Had to ask, sorry. So when, what in the spring? Give me an idea. What, what's a great, fun spring beer that we would get here? Probably our Maybach. It's another German style, of course, being in Fredericksburg. And it's a, it's a high alcohol, so it's one of those where you feel like you could drink more, but you probably but shouldn't. Don't. Yes, a little <laughs> bit goes a long way. Their pale ale is popular around these parts, too. And today's batch got an extra hit of hops. And you trust me to have a role in the beer making Might here, well right? Might as well go ahead and add the hops. Okay, I've got a fun job. I love it. All right, <laughs> anywhere and anytime? Anywhere, anytime. All right, here we go. <laughs> hey! 
nice. Pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to try it. Now, how long till that's ready? That one's going to be about three weeks till it's completely done. Okay, we'll be back in three weeks. All right. <laughs> a good craft beer deserves a killer Reuben or even a juicy bratwurst. And you can get both here, plus a whole lot more. The owners, Dick Espenson and his wife, Rosemary, are former Houstonians. They opted for a quieter lifestyle in the Texas Hills. After doing some research on brew pubs in Europe, they brought their ideas to Fredericksburg, along with some awesome recipes. Certainly we, we uh, provide for the German flavor, but there's also uh, the things that my wife and I like are uh, nachos, I mean, great nacho plate and, and good sandwiches and, and uh, pizzas and, and uh, uh, other foods that are more home style, like uh, meatloaf and things like that. And I think I saw a chicken fried steak. There's chicken fried steak as well. If someone, if you're with, you know, if your significant other is not a beer drinker, there's wine or cocktails too. But you know, the thing that was really impressive to us, because we were a little bit concerned about craft beers and the ladies, but it turns out that the ladies like the craft beers as much as the guys. And it's really neat to see when they will have one, maybe walk down the street with a craft beer instead of a glass of wine. Okay, well, we're not all that different. The big difference, we're a little smarter. Yeah, well, <laughs> that goes along with the beer. We've got like the not so dumb blonde. And uh, that's uh, our lightest one. And that was really conceived because uh, both of my daughters were blonde, my wife's blonde, and uh, you're blonde, yeah. Little... Yeah, well, somewhat. <laughs> when it's time to empty your stein and hang up your boots, why not head right upstairs? Enter your own Texas-themed hotel room. It turns out that if people come to the restaurant, they have a good time, they might not want to go home, so they can go upstairs and spend the night. And you're going when you do go upstairs, as you'll see, this is not just a place to, to lay your head. These are nice rooms. This well, is really a nice B&B. We have like 12 rooms. All of them are different, and uh, the people that stay certainly enjoy it. That's an understatement. This hot spot books up fast. Yeah, you don't want to just come in and expect that it's going to be available on the weekend. No, plan ahead. So if you strike out here, check out the Espenson's other cool concept in Fredericksburg called The Hangar, an old, active airport transformed into a World War II era hotel. I've got more information on that at goodtaste.tv. Pretty cool, right? Coming up next, you could win a spa weekend for two at this beautiful Houston hotel. Plus, the big red wines without the big price tag. My wine finds of the week. But first, the new steakhouse that has the Bayou City talking best beef. Phenomenal steaks with a killer view. We're saving you a seat next. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. What a spectacular view, right? We're taking it all in from the rooftop at B&B Butchers. Fantastic restaurant that I recommend for a romantic evening and a whole lot more. To get a real appreciation for this new Houston hotspot, we'll start day side outside. It wasn't that long ago that this stretch of Washington Street was nothing but abandoned buildings. The historic Dittman Bakery building was gathering dust until Benjamin Berg, an East Coast native turned Houstonian, stepped in to give it new life. You had a vision? I mean, when you walked in this building, did it, was oh, it instant? Yeah, it was instant. You know, I knew, I knew we could make this place uh, really work for us. In a city where tearing down to start over is the norm, Ben chose to preserve the building's roots, keeping the 100-year-old facade intact and simply adding to what was already here. I mean, this was, was an abandoned building. It had, uh, it was, I think, almost 35 years, but it was just, it was over around 100 years old. It was gorgeous. Um, and we just fell in love with the, the character of the building and um, really just wanted to take the challenge on and preserve it. Not only did Ben work to keep the coolness that comes with a centuries-old building, he also surrounded himself with sentimental reminders of his family ties. So you have a lot of East Coast roots, yes, right? And now you, you got some sense and you're in Houston and, and, now, and we love that. Yeah. We love that. But you bring a lot of your family's history and, and lineage 
as your great grandfather a butcher? My great grandfather was a butcher. My grandfather on my father's side was uh, as well. He was in the restaurant business in California. This sign that hangs in the bar once hung in his great grandfather's bar. Yes. So there must be a lot of pride when you walk in here and you see that. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, to, to still have that, it's you know pride in my family that we've been in this business, that we're carrying it on. Um, and it brings great like happiness to my, my family as well back in New York that there's a piece of piece of them here in Houston. What's old truly is new again at B and B. Remember the old neighborhood butcher shops? Well, B and B fronts the restaurant. All right, now that's what I call a steak. That looks amazing. Yeah, that's our dry aged uh, prime ribeye. Um, we have our New Yorks in here, our sirloins. We also have, uh, which we're really proud of, is our Texas raised uh, wagyu from yeah. Gerhardt Ranch out in Marfa, Texas. Lots of marbling, so it's just that Beautiful. buttery. You know, almost cut it with a spoon. Almost. Almost. You really almost we just caught them a little too thick. Ken, B&B's butcher, who just happens to be from New York City, says customers love the idea of a perfectly cut steak they can get to go. Exactly. So before the game on the weekends or, yeah. you know, any time, a party, whatever, we can cut whatever you like. You find a reason to celebrate when you've got a steak like that. From the butcher shop, we head to the kitchen where those fabulous steaks start their sizzle. And you got the ribeye, the bone in ribeye, you got the new cut. Biggest seller between these three? Uh, the ribeye, actually the ribeye is actually one of the best sellers here. Wow. There you go. Oh, man, I'm not used to turning a steak that big. Yeah, look at that. Back here too. That salt yeah. block you see in the oven is heating up to 450 oh, degrees. It's delivered to your table when you ordered the precious Kobe beef filet, flown in from Japan, a rare delicacy that cooks right before your eyes. Mouth-watering steaks aren't the only choice on the menu here. The wasabi-crusted tuna filet is incredible. So simple, yet so scrumptious. All right, chef, we're gonna give it a taste test here. Yep. Oh, wow. That wasabi's a nice little kick. Yep. But you nice get some crunchy, sweet. Right? Mm. Mm. Nice and crunchy, right? That is good. Yep. The carpetbagger oysters stacked with pork belly, filet mignon, and blue cheese are not to be missed. This classic recipe dates back to the 1800s, but at B&B, &B, it's one of the hottest things on the menu today. Uh, we put our own little touch on it, being in Houston. We fried the oysters, a little hot sauce, some beautiful uh, blue cheese dressing and crumbled blue. There's a lot going on in the flavor there. I love the carpet baggers, the appetizer to die for. Fabulous food and a family tradition. B&B &B Butchers brings it. Ben's East Coast roots rock to the Bayou City beat. This is an amazing place. What better place to Congratulate you, the restaurant that Ben built yep. in front of the sign your grandfather built. Perfect. Thank you for coming. Cheers. Cheers. Those carpet baggers at B&B &B are worth the trip. They're fantastic. Okay, everyone, it's time for my wine finds of the week, and I've got some good ones here. With a good steak, you want a good wine, and a Napa cab would be a great choice, but you're going to pay a lot more for a Napa cab. So I brought some from another wine region that I love, and that's Washington State. They make some beautiful wines. One of the wine varietals they're known for is Merlot. So we're going to start with the Merlot. This is Watchdog Rock. You can't beat the price point. It's about $11 a bottle. You get some beautiful flavors of black cherry, vanilla, some spice. This is a good steak wine with the filet. A Merlot is perfect. $14 Watchdog Rock. Okay, Cabernet fans, this is a wonderful find. Chateau Smith. Charles Smith, the winemaker of this wine, was named Winemaker of the Year by Food & Wine Magazine. And this is a fun wine and it's less than $20, so it cannot be beat. It has wonderful flavors of cassis, dark fruits, blueberry. This too has a little spice on it. Again, one of my fun wine finds, Chateau Smith, made by Charles Smith. And the perfect start or finish to any meal would be a glass of bubbly. And I've got a good one here, and again, from Washington State. This is Domaine St. Michel. It's made in the traditional champagne method, just like they do in France. Think of it as a glass of sparkling strawberries. This is a fun wine any time of the year with any meal. Found all of these 
at H-E-B. Enjoy, everyone. Coming up, find out how you could win a weekend for two at the Houstonian Hotel, complete with spa services from their award-winning spa, Trellis. Welcome back, everyone. This is your chance to win an incredible getaway to a beautiful hotel. Head to Good Taste TV right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian, complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful award-winning Trellis Spa. Love the Houstonian. Next week, ask anyone from Austin and they'll tell you the food here is puro mexicano and the mezcal goes down best with a little crunchy grasshopper in there. Plus, one of the coolest, hottest spots winning national attention is at the Pearl in the Alamo City. We'll take you there. Till next time, everyone. Cheers to good taste.